Greetings. Uh, this is Cameron Say again. Uh, these are the lectures for ITT 340. The presumption is that you're going to review these slides, uh, these movies, before you come to class so that you will have this material, uh, some exposure to it when we begin our discussions in class. Our class discussions are going to focus on um, kind of an industry perspective and labs. So the presumption is that you're going to review them. The mainframe is a very fascinating technology and I think you will come to agree with this um, fairly fairly conclusively as these lectures go along. Um, it is still being used as 50 years old technology but it's not really because the industry, IBM and the um, software vendors who develop software for the mainframe are continuously working on the technology. IBM is continuously working on the hardware so um, the, the, the technology remains relevant continuously. So this, the mainframe that you're using today is vastly different than the mainframe that began. However, the thing that's very important is that a program that was written in 1968 to run on a mainframe will run on the newest mainframe that IBM produces today with absolutely no problem and there are a lot of affordances for that so that is a, a big point of um, of the viability of it that it is 100 percent backward compatible and we will begin discussing that as the class goes along uh, so let's, let's look over the objectives of this chapter um, this is chapter one that we're in from your textbook we're going to list the ways in which mainframes of today challenge traditional thinking on computer uh, centralized computing versus distributed computing by distributed computing I mean the Intel architecture x86 including Mac um, the Mac architecture and also including um, personalized devices like smartphones and tablets and so those are distributed devices the mainframe is centralized computing so we'll look at the comparisons between those two types of architectures we're also going to explain how businesses make use of mainframes and the typical uses in terms of business. Um, a big one is transaction processing and uh, we, will, we will cover that um, fairly extensively. We're going to outline the major types of workloads for which mainframes are best suited. Workload uh, differentiation is a big part of mainframe computing. My contention is that the mainframe is not the best tool uh, for every job and the industry agrees but the jobs for which mainframes are best suited are best suited for those jobs for very very compelling reasons. We're going to talk about the roles and responsibilities of the different jobs. We may not break it down into five but there are a couple uh, that we will discuss. Um, kind of senior administrators versus, versus um, kind of simpler operator jobs and we're going to list the mainframe operating systems. I d definitely want you to differentiate um, the different types of mainframe operating systems. Um, not going to go over the terms too much. We will we will cover these terms in the textbook and in the um, in the lectures. Um, I will say this in class and I will say it in the movies. The um, exams and the quizzes you will have a lot of quizzes are coming directly from the textbook. So the slides in and of themselves will give you some background and give you some familiarity, but they're not intended for you to understand the technology comprehensively have to be able to go into the textbook and understand what's going on. You may find it a little challenging and a little daunting at first, but I assure you after a couple of readings uh, the fog will somewhat lift and stuff will start making sense. This is a very logical, very well designed um, technology so you won't have too much of a problem um, absorbing it. And we're not really doing a deep dive this term, but there is a lot to cover, so be advised. Uh, this date is very important. April 7th, 1964, Poughkeepsie, New York was the announcement of the mainframe. Um, and let me be clear about the term mainframe. Mainframe was a generic term that was used for all large computers and all computers were large uh, in the 1960s. Uh, but IBM saw the need for a general business computer that you could sell the same machine to a bunch of different companies and they were that were performing the same types of work and they saw that they would make a lot of money if they built the right machine and they did and the mainframe really put IBM on the map and so right now the term mainframe is relegated to 
uh, IBM's System Z. Um, they they talk about the power architecture as a mainframe to some extent, but they basically mean System Z. And we'll flesh that out as time goes on. But April 6, I'm sorry, April 7, 1964, very very important date in mainframe computing. Um, there are some of these earlier slides in the IBM, this is IBM material. Uh, they're somewhat um, their sales pitches to a certain degree, um, so I'll try to navigate around that. But be advised that things like processor technology, system performance, clustering, uh, uptime, downtime, and uh, disaster uh, recovery and disaster tolerance are a very important reason uh, why mainframes are still being used. Uh, these are very, very important um, characteristics of the mainframe, so uh, keep that in mind, even though this is something of a sales pitch. This slide is as true today as it was in 1964. Okay, we'll stop here. I want to keep the uh, segments to fi between five and six minutes uh, so that you don't get burned out. And um, we'll continue on with the rest of the chapter in the next slide.